The Indiana Hoosiers defeat Minnesota 70 to 58. And we're all asking the question, where the heck has this been? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started again thank you so much for being here making this your go-to spot for all things indiana athletics if you're on the youtube channel like the video subscribe it helps us grow you can become a part of our wonderful family we're having a lot of fun over here at locked on hoosiers and if you're a part of the audio listeners you can subscribe there you can turn on notifications wherever you can find us because we are free wherever you get your podcast. Indiana basketball defeats Minnesota 70-58 to on the road last night in Big Ten play, the final road game of the season, and the Hoosiers take care of business. And we're all asking, where has this been all season long? I think it's very fair to say, and I truly believe this, we're playing our best basketball right now. And I know the season has not been what we wanted it to be. The season has pretty much been a disaster. But in the month of March, the most important month of the year, we are playing our best basketball. And that's all you can ask for at this point, right? You had the news yesterday. All the reports come out of Mike Woodson returning as the head coach for the Hoosiers next year. And this team was also on a two-game winning streak. There was a lot going on into this game last night. And the Hoosiers came out ready to play, jumped on them 6 nothing early. Minnesota called timeout. This was a game of runs for a while. And then the Hoosiers just played good basketball. 70-58 to defense was extremely good. Offense was good enough. You start looking at some of the some of the scoring numbers here. How about Khalil Ware? How about Khalil Ware? I've been telling you, run the offense through him. He's too good, and a team like Minnesota doesn't have anybody to stop him. And that's exactly what happened last night. 12 of 16 from the floor, also hit two shots from downtown, had 11 rebounds, three assists, had a steal, had three major power blocks as well, and 26 points. Yes, he was an animal down low last night. He also had McKenzie Mbaco with 15, who really shot the ball well. One of his better shooting performances, I think, of the season, especially from downtown with three or four from behind the arc. He put on 15. You had Trey Galloway with 13, who had 11 assists. Yes, double-digit assists. He had a double-double with points and assists. It's unbelievable. That is his game. 13 points, that's great. Six of nine shooting, awesome. Also didn't shoot a three. Love to see that because he's just not a good three-point shooter, but he's dishing out the ball. He's finding his teammates. He's helping others score, which is helping this team score. That's his role, man. That's what he needs to do. You get that out of your starting shooting guard, that is effective basketball, let me tell you what. Malik Renew. He had a tough night, man. He had a tough night. Scored eight points. Says he only had three turnovers. I think there was more than that. I counted quite a few. He didn't shoot the ball great. I mean, he only shot it six times. So, And he had foul trouble. He was on the bench most of the first half. Didn't play well. Just didn't have a great night. But Indiana won anyways. That's a good sign here, folks. That's a good thing. The fact that we went on the road. We beat a middle-of-the-ground team in the Big Ten by double digits on their home floor. When I would say your second best player doesn't have a good game, that's a good thing. That's a good sign for this Indiana team. Gabe Cup's got the start once again at the point guard spot. Didn't do anything, but that's fine. I love I've told you this. I love Xavier Johnson coming off the bench. I think that's his role. I think that's where he needs to be. And you saw it last night where he didn't do anything crazy in the scoring column, but he did get five assists. 
Good for me. That's fine. Didn't have four turnovers. Not great. Got a little lazy with the basketball behind the back passes and stuff. Get that out of here, man. But five assists is good. That's what you want from your point guard. If he's not going to score, dish it out and help your team score. That's what happened with Xavier Johnson last night. You also had Anthony Walker, who played 14 minutes last night and had six points. And Unfortunately, he went down with what appeared to be a pretty nasty injury. He came down and and he landed on that right leg and it was stiff as a board when he came down and it looked like he buckled that knee and he was down for a while and the coaches came out, training staff came out and the, the and I love to see this. The teammates, everybody rushed over when the training staff tried to carry him off and they said, "No, no, we got it. We got it. We're going to get our guy and we're going to get him off the floor." And that's exactly what they did and I loved to see that. The good news is he was back out on the bench, standing up, celebrating, smiling, didn't have anything on that knee, no brace or ice or anything. So maybe it was just a lot scarier than than, than it looked, I hope. And we'll probably get some updates as we go and get closer to the weekend. And you hate to see that because he had just come in after Malik Renew picked up that third foul. And he came in and, and right there, got hurt on on pretty much the very next play. So hopefully he's okay. Uh, that's a guy like, he's not giving you a ton of production, but he does give you minutes and he's starting to play some of his best basketball too. And you don't want to see an older guy like that get hurt right here at the end of the season. Looking on the Minnesota side of things, Indiana did a really good job defensively. Their leading scorer came off the bench. It was Fox who had 14 because he came in and hit all the shots. He went five for five, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Mitchell had 13. Garcia had 12. That's the guy that you had to slow down and you did it. And look, Indiana's defense was good, but it wasn't 38% from the floor good. <laughs> like Minnesota just couldn't hit a shot, man. They were 38% from the floor, 19% from behind the arc. They could not buy a bucket until down the stretch, which kind of gave me a little scare, but Indiana pulled it out anyway. Hoosiers win 70-58. to Where has this been all season long? I don't know. It's taken this long. The team has gelled. The team is having fun. They're playing good. I think Woodson's starting to coach a little bit better, starting to figure out his team and his rotations. And all we can ask for is for this Hoosiers team to keep it going. You have Michigan State in the season finale on Saturday. Big 10 tournament, and hey, you just never know. We'll talk about likes and dislikes from this game. Plus, we'll take a look at the women's side, look at the women's tournament. Hoosiers coming up playing uh, tomorrow in the Big 10 tournament, so we'll take a look at that. All that coming up on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Back here on Lockdown Hoosiers, appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. We are pushing to 1,900 and then two thousand subscribers if you're on youtube hit the subscribe button on the channel it's free it's easy it lets you know every time we go live every time we go and give you a new episode and you can become a part of this community at locked on hoosiers likes and dislikes we do it every time we give you everything we liked from the performance everything we didn't like from the performance and sort of maybe some things to work on for this indiana team and you start breaking down the team stats a little bit look We're always going to shoot a high percentage from the field because 90% of our points come from the inside the paint, it seems like. But 54% shooting on the road, that's pretty solid. Compared to Minnesota's 38, 39, if you round up, I guess. Look, I said it in that last segment. Indiana's defense was good. They were very handsy. They forced a lot of turnovers. They forced 18 turnovers against Minnesota. That's a lot. For a team playing at home, that's a lot. And 
the defense was good for Indiana, very good. Their rotations were good. Their defensive uh, three-pointers were good. Their hands were good. Rebounding was there. They were very aware on defense in this game, but it was not so good that Minnesota could not hit a shot all night long. 39% from the floor, 19% from three. And here's the difference, right? We've seen, and you see teams all the time, where they can't hit threes and they just keep shooting and keep shooting and keep shooting and keep shooting and hope that they make them. That's what Minnesota did last night. They went 5 of 26 from behind the arc, and most of those makes were not until the last, what, seven or eight minutes of the second half. Here's what Indiana did. They went 5 of 8. 5 of 8. They only shot it eight times from back there, which is, you know, about right for this team, but yet they knocked down five of them. That's tough, man. Because I think we have finally realized, hey, that's not our game. If it's there, sure, let's take it and see if we can make it. But we don't need to shoot it 26 times. There were games early on we shot it 20, 22 times. And and I was screaming my head off on this show about how that's not going to win us basketball games. And it seems like we figured that out a little bit. I love five of eight from the three-point line. Got to love that. Only five of seven from the free throw line for us. And yeah, 72, 71% is fine, but we got to get to the line more. I don't like that. We got to get to the line more and get fouled. And this was a weird officiated game. I'm not going to get into that a whole lot, but I just think we got to get to the free throw line more, especially in the Big Ten tournament. And then we got to make them. We haven't been the best free throw shooting team this year. We're one of the worst, to believe it or not. And we got to clean that up. Also, I don't like the rebounding numbers. We got out rebounded by 10. That shouldn't happen to that Minnesota team. It shouldn't. We're much bigger, much better, much stronger than them. There's no reason we should get out rebounded by 10 to that Minnesota team. 13 offensive rebounds for them. That's not cool. But here's the stat of the night. Are you ready for this? Stat of the night that I absolutely love. You will almost never see a stat like this again. Indiana. We hit 30 shots from the floor, all right? 30 of 55. So 30 made baskets. On those 30 made shots, 28 of them came off an assist. Yes, 28 assists for this team on 30 made baskets. You talk about team basketball. That is the definition of sharing the rock and helping a man out, helping your brother out. That is elite level ball movement passing and working it to somebody else and working from a good shot to a better shot to the best shot 28 assists on 30 field goals I've never seen a number like that in my life and I've been watching basketball a long time I've never seen it be that close that many assists on that many made shots that's unbelievable is that attainable probably not but you love to see that grow and continue to be a high number like that because how many times this year have we seen Indiana go one-on-one solo ball? You'll see Xavier Johnson or Trey Galloway just try to make something of it or Khalil Ware try to make something of it or Malik Renew. Like We've seen those guys, and McKenzie Ibaka, we've seen those guys try to do that, and they weren't there. Could they do that now? Yeah, maybe. Or they could run the offense and work through each other and trust each other and pass to the open shot and knock it down. And that's exactly what they did. 28 assists on 30 made shots is just a a remarkable number. And you got to love that. If you can keep that sort of pace up, you're going to have a really good chance next week in the Big Ten tournament. 14 turnovers for the Hoosiers. Some of them were so sloppy, man. Just so sloppy with the basketball and and really just lazy, not caring type of passes. Um, I mentioned the the behind-the-back one with X earlier. and, And just some of those where... You're not thinking before you make the pass. You're just being very complacent with the basketball, and you can't do that. This is March. You cannot do that, and you've got to take care of it. Luckily, Minnesota scored or turned it over 18 times, and you actually outscored them by six off of those turnovers, and you scored 21 points on 18 turnovers from them. I'll take it, man. 21 points off their mistakes is really, really good. I mean, you're talking near a third of your total points were off their turnover. So really, really do love that. Points in the paint were 48. Yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously going to happen for this team. We got to find a way to stay out of foul trouble, man. And I'm, I'm afraid it's going to come back and get us in, in next week in postseason play. 
if Malik Renu goes out or Khalil Ware goes out or, God forbid, both of them get hurt or get into foul trouble, like, this team's in trouble if that happens. And we've already seen injury problems with them, and I'm not saying it's going to happen. I obviously don't know. But on the foul side of things, you've got to find a way to defend without fouling. Quit cheating in. Quit coming off the wing and stepping in on a ball handler as he's driving to the lane. Somebody else is going to be there to back him up. You don't have to step in and swipe at the arm and step out 40 feet from the basket and poke at the basketball. You don't have to do those things. And that's something that young guys like Malik Renu and Khalil Ware, they've got to learn. They have to learn. Whether Khalil Ware learns that in the NBA or Malik Renu learns it next year here, or maybe Khalil Ware learns it here next year too. That's a conversation for a later time. You cannot consistently be in foul trouble, man. And this Indiana team just gets in foul trouble. They they do struggle at times to keep their hands off, just squaring up. And I've said this before. I think Malik Renu and McKenzie and Baco get called for fouls that aren't fouls. I think they go straight up most of the time and they wall up. And Khalil Ware actually talked about that in his post-game interview on TV last night where they told him, look, go straight up. Wall up is what he said, and we're not going to call it. And that's sort of what happened with Ware down the stretch. But I don't know. I think those guys get called for unfair fouls, but, you know, that's just my opinion on that. They just got to find a way to do it and not get into foul trouble because if one or numerous of those guys sit on the bench for long periods of time, we can't win basketball games. Look at look at your scoring column last night. Look at who got all your points. Khalil Ware was your leading scorer, followed by McKenzie and Baco. And then Malik Renu is normally in there. He wasn't last night, but again, he was on the bench for most of the time. So let's say you take away another one of those. What happens if Khalil Ware only has half of his points last night? You lose the game. You lose that game if Ware's not as effective as he is. You cannot be on the bench. You can't win games with the best players not on the floor. That's what I'm trying to say here. Overall, man, this was awesome. This was a lot of fun. This was a fun game to watch, cheer for, right, a talk about with you. This is what we were wanting. This is the team we thought we had. And I know we have not had many games where this team has gotten to play fully healthy 100%, and that seems to be where it is right now, barring the the injury to, to Anthony Walker. But seeing this team run with Xavier Johnson, Trey Galloway, Mackenzie and Baco, Malik Renu, and Khalil Ware, that's a strong starting five. It is. That's a strong starting five that seems to be playing in rhythm together right now. And that's a dangerous thing in March. That's a dangerous thing when you have Michigan State coming in this weekend, Big Ten tournament next week. And again, you just never know. You never know what's going to happen. If we stay out of that bottom four, which I think we will, we actually moved up a spot. And now we're going to be playing Michigan State, the team above us as well. So lots at stake here. I don't know where it's been, but I'm glad it's here now. I'm glad it at least came sometime and we never saw it. That would have been depressing. And, and again, maybe it had something to do with, with the future of Mike Woodson or maybe maybe this team's just figuring it out. But overall, we're having fun. It's so nice to see. It's refreshing to see this game, this team play the way they are. 70-58 to 58 Hoosiers beat the Golden Gophers on the road. That's three games in a row now the Hoosiers have won, and they've got one more against Michigan State this weekend. We'll talk about that a little bit. Also look at the women's tournament, the Big Ten tournament. Hoosiers coming up playing very shortly, so we'll talk about that and all of that wrap it up in our final segment here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Look, I have an Amazon Fire TV. I have for years. I had a 55-inch for about six years. It did finally, I worked it to death now, and it did finally go out. But you know what I did? I bought another one immediately. And I even upgraded. I'm looking at it right now. 65-inch TV. It's awesome, man. Fire TV is the way to go. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's your opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to develop to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences 
as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Final segment here on Locked On Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Reminder, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast, video, audio, doesn't matter. We're always free, never behind a paywall, and up every single weekday. Hoosiers beat Minnesota 70-58, to and we look ahead, and man, there's not much more to look ahead at. Isn't that crazy? We are down to the final regular season game of the year. Michigan State coming to town, and look, Beginning of the year, this was a this was a game where you, you didn't know where it was going to go. You thought it was going to be a really good game because you were hoping it was going to be two high-powered teams, Indiana and Michigan State. That just hasn't been the case this year. Both teams have struggled pretty much all season long. Michigan State, remember, was a top-four preseason pick, and now they sit at 18-12 and 12 overall, 10-9 and nine in Big Ten play. And they've struggled here down the stretch. They were on a three-game losing streak to Iowa, Mich- or Iowa, Ohio State, and then on the road at Purdue, a game that they were in for most of the way. They did beat Northwestern 53-49. Ugly game. It was terrible. But they did get a win. So hope, or maybe they're feeling a little bit, but not hopefully. <laughs> maybe they're feeling a little bit better about themselves as they come to Bloomington this weekend. But we are at home. Indiana's at home. Senior day. You're going to have a lot of fun. I think Assembly Hall is going to be packed. And no, this is not two top 25 teams or two top teams in the Big Ten playing for the title, but these are two teams that are on the outside looking in, looking to make a run next week in the Big Ten tournament. And you look at the standings, we are right below Michigan State in the Big Ten standings going into the final day of the year. They're 10 and 9, we're 9 and 10. They're six games back, we are seven games back. So you, you've got some some room to play with here. We're going to stay out of that bottom four. Right now, we are two, four, six, eight. We're the eight seed right now in the Big Ten tournament. So look, get in, maybe win this game. Four-game winning streak. I've already said we're playing our best basketball right now. Maybe you can beat Michigan State and continue to roll with that. We'll have a whole episode going up for you tomorrow. Stay tuned. Got a surprise for you when it comes to this Michigan State game coming up over the weekend. So stay tuned for that want to look at the women's tournament really quickly. You had your first couple of games last night. You had Purdue take down Northwestern 78 72. That was an exciting game. And then you also had Minnesota, who was playing at the same time that their men's team was playing. Minnesota, the women take down Rutgers 77 to 69. That was a good game, too. It they took a they used a big fourth quarter uh to, to get that one in the books and Minnesota or Rutgers had destiny Adams who went off for 31 points, man, that's unbelievable. 31 points for them, but was not enough. Minnesota beats Rutgers. Here's what's coming up on Thursday. And then we'll look ahead to what Indiana's got in front of them. Illinois and Maryland start off the day. Purdue then plays Nebraska. Wisconsin will play Penn state and Minnesota will play Michigan and Indiana as the As the seed, they're just waiting. They're waiting there in the quarterfinals. Had that double by. They'll play Friday, Friday night. They will not play until very, very late. The last game on Friday night. And look, I think that I think this team is is destined to to win some games here. Obviously, the top three teams in the conference, Indiana, Iowa, and Ohio State, are just so stinking good, man. They're so good. And winning the Big Ten tournament would be fun. It'd be awesome because we didn't win the regular season title. Ohio State won that. But even if we don't, it's okay. Stay healthy, right? That's the biggest thing. Stay healthy. Get some momentum. Get your mojo back. And then let's get into the NCAA tournament and see where we can go. I still think Indiana should be a higher seed than they are projected right now. I feel like we're, we're kind of getting the shaft for some reason. And look, we get overlooked being in the Big Ten because of Caitlin Clark. That's fine. We get overlooked because of Ohio State winning the championship. That's fine. Let them write us off. Let them overlook McKenzie Holmes on this team, and then let's see what happens when we get to the tournament. 
I think it's going to be fun. This weekend will be fun. We'll be keeping up with that here on Locked on Hoosiers. And then the NCAA tournament is right around the corner for the women. We'll be keeping up with that as well. And then we get into the Big Ten tournament for the men. And then you never know if we're going to be talking NCAA tournament for Indiana men. We'll talk about it regardless, but I would love to be talking about both teams in the NCAA tournament. As I said, surprise coming up for you on tomorrow's episode on Friday for Indiana, Michigan State. We'll talk about that game, what is involved in that, looking ahead to the Big Ten tournament and also looking at the Indiana women as well. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Like the video, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. You can ring the bell, turn on notifications wherever you get your podcast. Never miss an episode. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. And until next time, Hoosier fans, stay safe. And I'll talk to you later.